Hi everyone, it's Steve Cabral. I am back with our weekly update on what is going on with the COVID-19 virus. And to share with you the unbiased statistics and unbiased viewpoints on where we're at right now and also where we are going over the next couple of weeks. I also wanna share with you some brand new research on what is working the best from a conventional medicine standpoint as well as from a naturopathic or natural medicine standpoint. Both have now great research as well as anecdotal research behind what is working. So besides that, I also want to go over what you can be doing right now for the next four weeks, and that's where we're gonna start. Because it does look like experts right now are more and more optimistic, cautiously optimistic, of where COVID-19 is going based on uh, multi-countries reporting back in their data, but also that this virus is not going to peak until what they're estimated of around April 15th to around April 22nd. That means if we are looking for a decline in um, the actual cases, that won't start for about mid-April. Now, after that, the good news is we'll start to see a decline in the number of new cases. So from best estimates right now, and these are from multiple, multiple experts, there was about a dozen uh, you know, virologists and people that are experts in this field actually write in and talk about uh, where they believe we're going to end up at. And many of those people are estimating we're going to be at about 2.5 million cases globally and about 250,000 deaths. So um, these are not, this is not good news, of course. I mean, I just, I want to say that, of course, straight out there that uh, we don't want to hear these types of statistics. But when we're looking at it and some people coming out early on and estimating that would it affect 3 billion, 4 billion people, or potentially even 70% of the entire world's population, uh, which would be about you know 5 to 6 billion people, well, that's certainly uh, 2.5 million is a far cry from that. And also keep in mind, as I've said before, that um, the flu affects about 30 million to 50 million people every single year. I also want to state this, that what we know about the virus has not changed. We do know that this virus is very serious and creates massive complications for those people over age 65, particularly over the age of 75 or immune complications. So when you see the news and you see people talking about 40-year-olds or 35-year-olds that are getting COVID-19, well, keep in mind first that it's not preventable, meaning you can't prevent yourself from getting the virus. However, what you can do is boost your immune system, keep your body healthy so that your innate immune system, along with good food, exercise, sleep, supplements, etc., can help your body naturally fight off the virus. We'll go over that in just a moment. But what I want to share with you is this is that many of these people, if you look into the backstory, were immune compromised. I saw many people around Boston worried about some of the younger people um, that unfortunately did die from this particular virus. And of course, this is tragic. There should be, we, we should not um, downplay any particular um, life at all. And that, that is not the case because that, again, that is someone's brother, their sister, their father, their mother, their grandparent. I mean, this, this is very, very serious. And so that is why at this time, we do need to make sure, especially that we are keeping our distance from those people that are immune compromised and those people that are potentially at risk, anyone over the age of 65 and especially over the age of 75 uh, with the um, average mortality still being around age 77 uh, to 81 years old. So what I wanna share with you is this. We're probably looking at about uh, 2.5 million cases, I believe more, because we're just at over 900,000 cases right now. And if we continue to see 10% day-over-day growth, we will surpass 2.5 million cases. Now, 20% of those cases, though, on a daily basis, honestly, are coming from the United States. The United States is doing a very poor job at testing right now. That's the truth. I have multiple personal acquaintances that they told me it took 12 days to get their lab back. That's insane. It took them 12 days to find out if they were positive or not. And both people tested positive. Now, both people are completely fine. They were both in their 30s. They're doing well, but they had complications. They got tested. And while well, they were told that they may or may not have it. So that's that type of testing is not helping, right? If you have symptoms, keep yourself isolated for sure. Now, a, a big thing that I want to share with you too is that 
equilibrium what nutrition was just asked to participate and help out with improving COVID-19 at-home lab testing. And this could be a game changer. I'm hoping that these lab tests roll out quickly. Equilibrium Nutrition was asked that if anyone in our community tested positive for COVID-19, um, and they're doing well, of course, that we are getting them, we're connecting them with one of the largest labs in the U.S., and they're sending them out a lab. And they're sending them out a lab to use their lab, which will eventually be used for at-home lab testing, to help people um, get earlier results. That's our goal. So our goal with Equilibrium Nutrition is to help as many people as possible. And since we are one of the largest uh, functional medicine lab companies out there, uh, we do want to be able to help as many people as possible. So I'm excited about that news because I'm excited about the potential of finally conventional medicine realizing that functional medicine is the wave of the future. And the future is right now. And we saw that this week in the New York Post where it leaked out that many hospitals are now using vitamin C and it's working very effectively for those people uh, dealing with COVID-19 complications. They are giving them 1,500 milligrams four times a day. That's 1.5 grams four times a day. Now, if you've been listening for weeks, we've been telling you from the very beginning, people should be t taking between two and five grams per day, which is uh, 2,500 to 5,000 milligrams daily in order to boost their immune system before they get COVID-19, right? And um, if you do get it, especially, you want to be up in your vitamin C dosage. Now, I shared with you the research as well that if you do understand what's called orthomolecular medicine, you know that there isn't one form of vitamin C or one form for everything. Now, from research basis, the best form of vitamin C to be using for a virus is ascorbic acid. Now, again, we have whole food products as well. It's called full spectrum vitamin C, but we're not, we're, we are using that. But if you want a higher dosage, we do recommend the alkalizing vitamin C, which is a buffered vitamin C. But good old ascorbic acid taken internally is working very, very well. Now, if you were to do it intravenously, you would actually use a product called sodium ascorbate. And I will share all of the research and the charts at stephencabral.com forward slash virus. So if you want the actual charts showing you the effectiveness of vitamin C, um, and you can see how it's utilized in the body, you'll see that ascorbic acid is best used internally as a supplement, and sodium ascorbate is best used intravenously in a hospital uh, because it has a better pH and better absorption for the body over time. But again, hospitals know this, so uh, it's something that you can request and something that you can certainly use as well. So um, these are things that I'm recommending uh, right now because they're based right in the research. Now, in China, their research won't be published till September, but they're using much higher dosage of vitamin D, and that is, in, uh, sorry, vitamin C, and that's used intravenously. So really important that we look at these studies that we are keeping up on both sides. And from a conventional medicine standpoint, um, I gave you all the different types of pharmaceuticals that have been used for complications of COVID-19, but the one that seems to be using the most right now is hydroxychloroquine uh, combined with azithromycin. And the azithromycin is actually being used for secondary uh, bacterial-based infections or secondary infections, such as a pneumonia. Now, the reason I want to share this with you is so that you can see it from both sides of the aisle and from an unbiased perspective. So um, that research came out of France, originally being used with those two drugs. The first drug being used typically for people with rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, autoimmune-based issues, combining that with azithromycin. I'll be talking about post um, or secondary based infections like bacterial infections in the future. I'll probably talk, talk about that more next week, but just know that you can begin using these things now for anyone that obviously needs it. For those people from more of a natural health perspective, of course, we want to be sticking to the things that we already know are being proven, and that's melatonin. Again, melatonin anywhere from, I'll give you the, all the dosages in just a moment, but five milligrams to 20 milligrams per night. Now, I would typically never go to 20 milligrams of melatonin, um, uh, at all, except in a very short period of time. But if you were to end up with the virus, you could certainly increase your dosage because melatonin is a powerful uh, inflammation balancer and powerful cytokine balancer as well. So really great product. Zinc up to 75 milligrams per day uh, when you are not feeling well, typically 50 milligrams on a daily basis or less. And then we're looking at vitamin D. Vitamin D, 5,000 IUs per day, 125 micrograms or so. 
And I just went over my podcast, what it is from micrograms to IUs, because remember the international units are changing to micrograms now in the future with fat soluble vitamins. Hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier in the future to kind of realize and look at all these specific things and uh, be able to read the labels. Um, and, but again, when sick, you could raise your vitamin D to double that, right? You could raise your zinc to 75 milligrams. You could raise your vitamin D to 10,000 IUs per day. Uh, you could raise your vitamin C to five to 10, uh, grams per day or to bowel tolerance if you decide to, and your melatonin, um, I'm taking two and a half milliga- milligrams to five milligrams every single night right now, uh, just to keep my immune system boosted. And um, I'm doing that even though I, I dealt with a very um, strong virus in January that I spoke about in my podcast. I don't know if that was COVID-19 or not. Um, either way, again, as I always say, remember, you may not be able to prevent a sickness or illness, but what you can do is balance your immune system. And your immune system, when healthy and when balanced, will beat a virus or infection every single time. Now remember, this does not discount the fact that you may need to seek medical attention. Don't ever say, oh, well, I'm just going to try to use natural-based medicine if your life is at stake. Remember, for life-saving conditions, we are lucky to have conventional medicine and all of the conventional medicine testing. So be smart. Use natural-based medicine first. Use it right now. If complications... um, become apparent, that is when to absolutely seek out medical-based advice. So I do hope that videos like this are giving you hope because they should, helping you to understand who's most at risk, our 65 plus uh, parents, grandparents, uh, ourselves, anyone 65 plus, those people that are immune compromised, not to continue to believe the fair um fair uh, media trend that is going on right now to understand that real experts believe will probably um, continue to increase until about April 22nd, uh, April 15th to April 22nd. And the last thing I want to leave you with is that do I do believe that we will be locked down for most of the United States, if not um, Australia and lots of other parts of the world as well, uh, through May. I really believe that. Boston just did a complete lockdown. I shut down for all non-essential businesses through May 4th. I believe much of the country will contend- continue to follow suit. And so um, just make sure that you are prepped, that you have your food, that you have your supplies, that you have your supplements, that you're doing online workouts, that you're doing whatever you need to to keep yourself healthy. And of course, continue to work on your medita- meditation, anything that you can do to reduce stress, get your sleep. So follow the very first video I ever did on this topic. And that's at stephencabral.com forward slash virus. It goes through the entire de-stress protocol. And of course, if you're doing the spring detox with us this week, I can't recommend that enough. I'm on day two now as I record this video. I'm feeling great. I may break it with dinner tonight. We'll see. It depends on how I'm feeling. Remember, you don't want to over fast, over exercise, overdo anything at this point uh, and be smart about it. So you don't want to get to the point of exhaustion. If I feel like I'm getting to the point of exhaustion, of course, at this time, it's not the time to take any chances and I'll simply have a nice dinner with my family tonight. So hopefully this has been helpful. This is our fourth video in the series. I will continue to update you on a weekly basis. Check out stephencabral.com forward slash virus for the vitamin C charts, uh, for the pharmaceuticals that are working, for the dosages for all of the products, and exactly what we are doing right now. I hope you are well. I hope your family is well. Again, if I can help in any way, please do let me know. I'm here to help. I'm here to answer your comments. Uh, Take care. Be well. We'll talk soon.